Hey everybody, welcome to our Open Heaven Church prophetic ministry meeting. Uh, we're so glad that you can join us wherever on the planet you are. Um, I would just speak in the name of Jesus right now that the same Holy Spirit that is so present here in this studio where we've been practicing our worship is just as present in your home. And the Lord is amongst us to do mighty things today. And um, there's a, a whole, we've got a whole list of words of knowledge for people um, who need ministry today. And um, we've still got people coming in. So we're going to uh, start the worship. And uh, I'm just going to open with prayer and um, invite the Holy Spirit to come. Lord, we just thank you that as we're here in your presence today, Lord, that there is no distance in the Spirit but we're between where we are physically separated, Lord. Wherever each of us might be, here or anywhere else on the planet, Lord, we are in one spiritual room and your Holy Spirit is present. And wherever two or three are gathered, there you are in the midst, Lord. I thank you for what you're going to do today. I thank you, Lord, for the transformation of people's hearts. I thank you, Lord, for healing and for deliverance. I pray, Father God, that, um, that broken families would be restored today. I thank you, Father God, that you're going to do amazing things among us. And Lord, we start off by worshipping you today and invite you to come in great power. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. And all my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God love you Lord I love you Lord oh your mercy never fails me and all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice you have led me through the fire in darkest nights you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived in the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good with every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. 
Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. We will sing of your goodness, Lord. Your mercies in you every morning. Great is your faithfulness to me, Lord, to me, Lord. Great is your faithfulness to me. And in the midst of my trouble, Lord, I reach out and receive from you. In the midst of trials and tribulations, your fire still burns. 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 Your fire still burns in me. Your fire still burns. Your fire still burns. Your fire still burns in me. All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God No, my life you have been faithful. Thank you, Father. And no, my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing. On the goodness of God, I will sing of the goodness of God. Give you praise, Lord.
say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all days. So highly exalted, your glorious in heaven above. Yet humbly you came to the earth you created. All for love's sake became poor. Here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me.
on this thirsty desert ground in a dry and barren land i bow down i need you now you are calling i will come to your river i will run i bow down i need you now on this dirty desert ground in a dry and barren land i bow down i need you now you are calling i will come to your river i will run i bow down i need you now oh living water oh god my savior if i ever needed you i need you now water oh god my healer if i ever needed you i need you now tell him how much you need him tell him how much you want him to come Turn your life upside down Cause that's what he's doing He's purifying, sanctifying, transforming you From glory to glory So let his fire fall upon you now Refine fire pour let it come let it purify let it do its work in you you're the start and you're the end you complete what you begin I bow down I need you now. You're the star. You're the star and you're the end. You complete what you begin. I bow down. I need you now. You are calling. You are calling. I will come to your river. I will run. I bow. I need you now, oh living water, oh God my Savior, if I ever needed you, I need you now, oh living water, oh God my healer, if I ever need I need you now Just like the desert needs the blessing of the rain Just like the winter waiting for the sun again I need you now and Just like a river as it reaches for the sea Just like a song it needs the sound of melody I need you now and Just like the desert needs the blessing of the rain Just like the winter waiting for the sun again I need you now and Just like a river as it reaches for the sea Just like a song it needs a sound of melody I need you now, oh living water, oh God my Savior.
Savior. If I ever needed you, I need you now. Oh, living water, oh, God, my healer. If I ever needed you, I need you now. If I ever needed you, I need you now. If I ever needed you, I need you now. I just feel like the Lord is giving me a word uh, for us generally here in this meeting that um, for those of us particularly who are struggling with where we're at at the moment and the struggles that we're going through, I feel the Holy Spirit saying, submit to the fire because he's transforming from glory to glory. It's his promise in his word that we move from one level of glory to the next. And for that to happen, the fire has to come and we need to, to allow that fire to come and Take us where he needs us to be in this season. Your spirit is amazing. 
prevailed in me. Glorious and mighty, my risen Savior King. All I am will ever be poured out. Glorious and mighty, my risen Savior King, all I am will ever be, poured out at your feet. All Lord, we want to praise you and thank you for your presence in every room that's tuned into this internet broadcast, Lord. I want to thank you, Lord, that you have been settling people's hearts and bringing them back to that place of perfect submission to what you want to do in every life, Lord. I thank you, Father God, that within this gathering of believers, Lord, there is a, a motion from one level of glory to the next. And we recognize the work of grace that that is, Lord, and we receive it by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Isn't it awesome how God can come and transform our hearts in a moment of worship and completely capture our attention and bring us to that place where we're just going, yes, God. <laughs> and there's always at least a touch of repentance in that moment. Thank you, Lord. I want to thank Irene and Sarah for... Uh, beautiful anointing on the worship this morning. This is my niece, Sarah. This is my sister from another mother <laughs> over here, Irene. And, um, you know, we have our, our ministry team that are so kindly given of their time today and the guys in the tech room in there. We've had so many dramas over the last few weeks, but today I believe we're breaking through into <laughs> uh, less and less technical problems and just such a, a, a powerful uh, release of the anointing and his presence. I'm going to ask Sarah to come and share for a couple of minutes on giving and um, then we're going to move on into something else in the meeting. Just come over here, Sarah. There's not a lot of room. but And boys, if you can turn off that guitar mic, please. Thanks, Uncle John. Um, so my name's Sarah, as already mentioned. I'm just going to share a scripture um, that's been on my heart for a few weeks now um, from Jeremiah chapter 17. Um, and it's, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes. But its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. And I just wanted to um, declare that as a prophetic declaration over you today, that it may be the year of drought for the world, 
and for those who don't believe, but for those who put their trust in the Lord, it will not affect you negatively because you are prospered and you are blessed when you put your faith and your hope and your trust in the Lord and not in man. And I want to declare to you that you will not cease from yielding fruit and that you will not be anxious or fearful when the heat comes, when the drought comes, but you will continue to uh, be fruitful be prosperous and I want to encourage you that when the drought comes that is the best time to sow into the kingdom that is the best time to step out in faith and be obedient to what the Holy Spirit puts on your heart Um, because that's when he wants to bless you and to say because that's when he shows up and says this can't be the world because the world is failing right now (laughs) When I bless you, it's, it's going to be obvious to everyone that it's the Lord who does it. So it's, it's, a, it's a proclamation in your life of God's faithfulness, but it's also, it's also a statement to the world, look, the Lord is blessing me, not through my own strength, not because I rely on man or anyone else or a career or a bank or, or whoever, but because God is faithful And so I just want to encourage you with that um, to sow into the kingdom and watch God's faithfulness manifest in your life as you do that. Um, So I'll just give you a moment to to wait on the Holy Spirit to put on your heart um, what he would like you to to sow and give today. And as um, you do that, uh, we're going to put up the details on the screen. I'm just going to pray. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. I thank you for your promises that you've given us in your word, Lord. And today we stand on your promises and we declare them. And we thank you, Lord, that they will they will not return void to us. And I just bless everyone who gives today. And I thank you for your faithfulness manifest in their life. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. We don't um we don't often do um, offering messages in our church because our church everybody's kind of used to we, you know let me put it this way we have a very generous church congregation and so we don't often do um, giving messages but that was really powerful and and it, it, it was good you know it takes faith to sow when you're in a time of need and sometimes that's when you really need to give. Um, I just realized that there's a whole bunch of people having problems logging into the Zoom meeting because they couldn't find the link in their confirmation email that allows them into the meeting. Lucas, can you tell me how many we've got in the meeting at the moment? 39. Yeah, I'd, I'd, say, um, I'd say we're missing a good 50 or 60 because of that issue and there's not a lot I can do about it at the moment. Um, there's no way we can communicate with them at the moment, unfortunately. No. So, um, actually, if um, there is one way that we could address this, Sarah's coming in there now. If you put her onto the Kingdom Rain email account, all the email addresses of people that registered will be there because I've got a confirmation for each person. And Sarah can email them individually and give them the link to log in. Um, we'll sort that out. That'll, that'll take a bit of doing. I thought that we had finally got past all our um, technical issues, but evidently not. But we will get there, and we're not where we <laughs> we're not where we want to be, but we're not where we were. So we're on the right track. Um, I know that a lot of you in the meeting today are, are, as, are here as a result of the three prophetic words that I had for the USA over the last month. And as I was considering about um, what to speak a little bit about today, there's a couple of things that God's put on my heart. The first is to do with um, how to judge a prophetic word generally as to its authenticity or whether or its completeness. And the second one is to do with healing. And I'm gonna, we're going to share a, a healing testimony with you. Um, 
But if you're like me, you will have found it difficult to sift through and discern um, what actually is from the Lord at the moment. There are so many prophetic words that are flying around the internet about what's going on in the world and, and particularly in the United States of America. And I know that there's uh, one prophetic word in particular that's just gone crazy in the U.S. with uh, well over a million views so far. And um, I want to talk uh, for a moment about what I would r regard as a key plumb line to discerning uh, whether a prophetic word is truly from the Lord or whether it's a little bit incomplete perhaps or not quite. Uh, where it should be um, and that uh, plumb line would be does the prophecy include a redemptive purpose if the prophecy is only telling you to run from the hills run for the hills it's incomplete if the if the prophecy is telling you all doom and destruction and there's no redemptive purpose in that prophecy if it's all about judgment and nothing else then I would say it is at best incomplete and, um, and sometimes it could be even a false prophecy. Now, I'm not saying that any particular prophetic word out there at the moment is a false prophecy. I'm just giving you what I would regard as a plumb line for an accurate um, and complete prophetic word. This last Sunday, just a couple of days ago here in Sydney, I preached at our church out of Jeremiah and in particular a passage of Jeremiah where Jeremiah is being persecuted terribly for um, releasing what God has to say about the future of Jerusalem in particular because they had put their children through the fire to Baal and to Molech. And, um, but I want to point out something that even uh, the prophet most associated, I would say, with doom in the Old Testament, Jeremiah, um, he spoke out of God's redemptive purpose for his people. And you can see that very clearly delineated in Jeremiah 24, where Jeremiah has a vision of two baskets of figs. And one is a basket of good fruit and the other is totally rotten and good for nothing. In Jeremiah 24, 3 to 8, um, God says to him, The Lord said to me, What do you see, Jeremiah? And I said, Figs. The good figs, very good, and the bad, very bad, which cannot be eaten, they are so bad. Again, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Like these good figs, so will I acknowledge those who are carried away captive from Judah, whom I have sent out of this place for their own good. See the redemptive purpose there? They're losing everything. They're being taken into captivity, but it's for their own good into the land of the Chaldeans. For I will set my eyes on them for good and I will bring them back to this land. I will build them and not pull them down and I will plant them and not pluck them up. There's God's redemptive purpose for the thing that they're going through. Then I will give them a heart to know me that I am the Lord. That comes from repentance. And they shall be my people and I will be their God for they shall return to me with their whole heart. God knew that his people would find repentance in captivity and when they did, restoration would come. I believe in this season of the world, God is looking for a repentant heart from nations. The nations would say, God, we have broken your standards and we repent and ask you to come and guide us again, lead us and guide us again. Then you see the other side of the picture in verse 8. And as the bad figs which cannot be eaten, they are so bad, surely thus says the Lord, so will I give up Zedekiah, the king of Judah, his princes, the residue of Jerusalem who remain in this land, and those who dwell in the land of Egypt. Why did he give them up? Because they had purpose in their heart to reject the will of the Lord for their nation. Zedekiah and the princes of the land were those who threw Jeremiah down into a pit. They were the people who put him in stocks and mocked him in the courts of the temple. They were the people who rejected the will of the Lord. And so God said, I will discard those who reject me. So when somebody sends a prophetic word out on the internet, uh, no matter how convincing it might sound, um, no matter 
How many people have viewed it? How many people are speaking about it? Run this plumb line over that word. Can you find God's redemptive purpose in the prophetic word that is being released? Because if you can't find it, then that prophetic word is incomplete and incomplete at best and not from the Lord at worst. Um, I make those comments because I've, uh, I've released three prophetic words for the United States over, uh, of America over the last month. But in every one of those prophetic words, I was releasing encouragement to the remnant church in the United States of America to press into God so that what the enemy has purposed for the U.S. would not come to pass and that America would continue uh, back, it would, sorry, not continue, would turn around and turn back into the path of the Lord so that its destiny in God would be restored. That's the redemptive purpose across those three words. So um, we're going to get into some prophetic ministry in a couple of minutes. But before we do that, um, I'm going to show you a uh, testimony from the last prophetic ministry meeting that we had on the uh, 12th of June. I don't know if that was the last one. Anyway, the, the prophetic ministry meeting that we had on the 12th of June, there was um, a lady in that meeting um, who had a problem with gastric reflux and she messaged me afterwards and um, told me what God had done in her life. And so, uh,
okay, I've got one here. Uh, so for somebody who feels a calling to ministry, is that you, Sebastian? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, thought, I thought that was it. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, I, I believe that God is saying to you today that he wants to confirm that calling. Um, I believe it's a pastoral calling. Does that resonate with you? Yeah, in deliverance, in healing, pastoral, yeah. Okay. So I, I just want to thank you, Lord, that you are opening doors for Sebastian to move into what you have for him in his calling. I want to thank you, Lord, that the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. You do not change your mind. And I would speak to that speak to that spirit that has been lying to him and confusing him and telling him that he's Amen. not good enough, that he doesn't have the experience, that he doesn't have the Amen. knowledge. Amen. I just want to speak yes. over you that, that. God... Uh, anoints those who submit to the call upon his life. It's not about your education. It's not about your background. It's not about any of those things. It's bit about the anointing of God upon your life. I declare that that anointing is being released upon you right now in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it's invading those places that were previously uh, stymied or held back by the spirit of confusion and the curses that have been spoken over the church. I Amen. prophesy over you that you will go back to Romania carrying the glory of God with you to minister to people who previously persecuted the Christian church. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Whoa, wasn't expecting that. <laughs> so I just I thank you, Lord, for Sebastian. Christ. I thank you, Father God. You open, I see doors opening now. They're just going bang, 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 bang. Door after door after door Hallelujah. after door. Yes, there's, also Amen. Some, Amen. there's also in some Jesus false Amen. doors that, that are kind of cracked open. They're like false doors. They're, they're like a, a, a something that the enemy wants you to step into before you're ready. Or they're, they're, they're rooms that God doesn't want you to step into. The enemy's trying to, to put, um, uh, put his um, confusion in your way. That's why I'm having trouble Definitely, yeah. picking this up because the spirit of confusion is trying to confuse me. But I believe that the enemy is trying to put false doors slightly open in front of you um, to try and uh, distract you from what God has for you. And the Lord is saying that as you wait on him and as you are, as you are led out by his peace in your decision-making processes, so um, every time you step through the right door, it will be immediately confirmed by the peace you feel even when opposition comes in the name of Jesus. God bless you, Sebastian. Amen. Thank you very much. I can't wait Pastor to hear John, back thank from you. you like when, when this all starts cracking open. It's going to be awesome, man. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Put me back to the gallery, please, Lucas. Okay, this uh, uh, John, I'll stop you there quickly. Yep. Um, we do have another one, Joseph, that was responding to your previous one. Is that okay if we put him up? The one about stuck in your old ways? Yeah. Um, he said that he's uh, stuck spiritually and he can't, um, yeah, it feels like he can't move forward. Okay. In our ways. Oh, um, yeah, okay, yeah. Joseph. You're going to have to unmute your microphone, my friend. Hi. Oh, there we go. I can hear you now. We're about to you, Joseph. Kenya, Nairobi, Kenya. Kenya. Wow. That's awesome, man. Um, yeah. So I, I want to ask you because uh, I, I, I'm hearing this. Uh, I, I'm hearing this now. Are you surrounded by people that are involved in witchcraft? Yes. Yes. Okay, so uh, how long have you been uh, a born-again believer in Jesus? Uh, 11 years. Beg your pardon? 11 years. 11 years. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, so the internet connection is not great here, but I just wa I want to speak into this, okay? So, Lord, I, I, I want to speak to I speak to those spirits now that are around Joseph in witchcraft. Have you yourself been involved in witchcraft, Joseph, before you no. were before you were saved? No. Okay. So I, I want to thank you, Lord, that those spirits of witchcraft, those bewitching spirits, 
that keep him where he is. I, I would speak a breaking of their power off of Joseph right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I rebuke those spirits in the name of Jesus. And I tell you that this is a blood-bought son of God. Bought by the blood, brought into sonship by grace, by mercy, by the blood of Jesus. And I declare a wall around you, a wall around you of the anointing of the Holy Spirit to discern the names of the spirits that are coming against you because the Lord says to you today that you are going to grow in the spirit of discernment. Not only will you break free of the influence of these spirits, the Lord says to you today, you will identify them by name and you will cast them out of others in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, not just for deliverance today for Joseph, but a deliverance anointing to come upon him. And I thank you, Father God, that his training in deliverance will be given to him by somebody who knows what they're doing. With no discoloration of animistic practices or anything like that, I thank you, Lord, you're bringing Joseph into something new. And I just saw a comment come up on the screen, hedged in by the Holy Spirit. That's exactly what you are, Joseph, hedged in by the Holy Spirit. Receive your deliverance by faith and begin moving into what God has for you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Put us back to the gallery, please, Lucas. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Let's come back to Joseph for a minute. Uh, Joseph, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, I can. I'm going to put you in with uh, with uh, a deliverance team right now, okay? So I've got a ministry okay. team that, that are going to just, just ask you a couple of questions and, and if there are any specifics that the Lord needs to deal with, they're going to help you through that. Would that be okay? Yeah. Awesome. Put them in with Rose and Renee, please, Lucas. Thank you. Um, back to gallery view. Uh Okay, there's somebody uh, There's somebody else in the meeting and you have a problem with your right wrist. And right after this, um, right after that word of knowledge, I had another word of knowledge for a partial ligament tear. And I'm just thinking that perhaps the two might be connected, but they don't have to be. So if you have a uh, right wrist problem or a partial ligament tear anywhere in your body, just wave. Okay, so somebody's waving to me, Paul and Darcy um, there. Okay, so we have Paul and Darcy Camps. Um, I need your microphone unmuted. I need to be able to hear you guys. You're good. Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you now. Are you in England? No, we're in the United States. Oh, okay. In Madison, Wisconsin. Madison, Wisconsin. Yep. I had a word for, for Wisconsin in part three of that prophetic word for the United States of America. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> and, then, and then somebody sent me a uh, somebody sent me an email and they said, um, "Well, it's a good thing you prophesied over Wisconsin because most of the churches in Wisconsin are entirely dead to the things of the Holy Spirit." <laughs> I'm not speaking that over your state. I'm just saying what those people said. Um, I'll tell you what, there are plenty of churches here in Australia that are dead to the things of the Holy Spirit as well. We're believing for a mighty move of God. But I believe uh, something significant, really significant, is going to happen in Wisconsin. And I believe it's associated with that part of my prophetic word where the whole nation is going to pause for a moment and consider their ways so i and I, I look i honestly have no knowledge about whether this will be a negative thing or a positive thing i would much prefer that revival broke out in wisconsin and then just went throughout the nation but i don't really have any knowledge of that but uh welcome to the meeting guys and one of you has a problem with their wrist um no i have a ligament and tendon tear in my ankle Okay, well, that was a that was actually a, a separate a word of knowledge I had, but because it was right after the wrist, I thought maybe that's what the problem with the wrist is. But that ligament tear, um, God's going to heal you today. Um, he, he's absolutely going to heal you. 
And um, so I, I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to break off the spirit of infirmity and then I'm going to put you in a ministry mm -hmm. room with Pastor Lindell and Chrissy and they're going to pray for you and that healing is going to be made complete. I just want to break off the spirit of infirmity, okay? Amen. So Lord, I just pray over Darcy right now in the name of Jesus and I would speak to that spirit of infirmity that has caused an ongoing issue with her ankle. Has this been an ongoing thing for a while there? Um, for about a year. Okay, so this is a spirit of infirmity, and instead of the thing getting better, it just, just goes and goes yes. and goes and yes. goes. We're going to break off the infirmity, and then I'm, I'm going to put you in with, with uh, Pastor Lindell and also with Chrissy, and they're going to pray for you. And uh, so I'm going to break the infirmity. They're going to release the healing. We're going to tag team it like, you know, World Wrestling Federation or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's called that anymore, but anyway. So, Lord, I just pray for Darcy in the name of Jesus. I take authority over the spirit of infirmity, and I thank you, Father, that right now, spirit of infirmity, I cancel your assignment. You cannot oh, yes. plague this couple with ill health anymore. Um, yes. Paul, have you got a health issue that's going on at the moment? No. Nothing at all? No, not that I'm aware of. <laughs> Okay, okay, that's good. I was just, I was hearing something, but if you're all good, you're all good. So I just thank you, Father God, that the power of the spirit of infirmity has been broken. Its assignment has been cancelled. And now Darcy is free to receive healing in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. That thing's broken, Darcy. That thing is oh, really? broken. So, uh, Lucas, if you can put uh, Darcy and Paul in that room with uh, Chrissy and Lyndall, that'd be awesome. Yep, awesome. Um, and I also have you. one for you after. So just hang on there for a second. Okay, sure. Nice to meet you guys too. So the other one is actually the right wrist and okay. that's Sarah in the control room. So she's coming in right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you could just get Sarah to maybe use the vocal mic there, she can, uh, she can speak into that if she wishes. Okay. <laughs> so come on, <laughs> something good. Come and, come, and gr come and grab that mic. <laughs> here I am interviewing my own niece. Yeah, come and stand over here. So Sarah, uh, just so for integrity's sake, did I have any knowledge that you have a problem with your wrist? No, and I've had this problem for 10 years and I asked the Lord yesterday, I've had enough and I want it healed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were just talking about faith and faith to receive. Um you know what? Your faith to receive just multiplied my faith to impart. Woohoo! So <laughs> just grab the mic with your other hand yeah. and give me that wrist. And in the name of Jesus, I just thank you, Lord, for the movement that's taking place where it needs to take place. I thank you, Father God, for the fire of your presence going through this wrist. I thank you, Father God, that Every impediment is being removed in the name of Jesus. Move it around. Tell me what's going on. Uh, well, as you were praying, I felt pressure. On, I have a, I have a cyst. If you can see that, and I felt oh, like okay. pressure on that. Thank you, Lord. Cyst. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we speak to this cyst in the name of Jesus, and we command it to go. We thank you, Father God, that um, that this was purchased by Jesus suffering and by his stripes Sarah is healed I thank you Father God for the testimony that's going to come from this I don't we don't have anybody in here to zoom in on this but um, but um, there's there's a bump on the top of her wrist so I'm just declaring in the name of Jesus but that by the time it, it, it might even go down in the next couple of minutes but by the time we do our next meeting that you're part of, that will be holding that wrist up again and there will be no bump there whatsoever. And if it goes in the meantime while you're in the control room, you give me a wave and we'll I get will. you back oh, in here. Yeah, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hallelujah. So you felt pressure in it while, yeah, while we were Yeah, it felt praying. like, I mean, you weren't pressing on that part, but it felt like like someone was pressing down Hallelujah. on it. Hallelujah. <laughs> I believe it's done. Amen. I believe it's me too. absolutely done. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Okay, do we? I just want to go back to this thing about the lady who is barren. Is there somebody who, um, in the meeting that really wants uh, a baby, but you've been unable to have one? 
Uh, if no one responds to that one, we do have Michael there on the side responding to a previous word. Okay. Yeah. What are what are you responding to, Michael? I'll just uh, I wait until he brings him. you up. Yeah, he's got to unmute you first. Okay. Okay. Hello. Hi, Michael. Hello, How are you doing? Where about to you? What's it doing? Uh, California, USA. Wow. You're in that state where they've told you you can't sing in church now. Yeah, that's it. Wow. <laughs> Uh, I yeah. heard that one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what's uh, no? I won't, I won't ask about all that. All right. So, uh, uh, what what word of knowledge were you responding to? Okay, the one with the pain in the wrist. I've had uh, pain in my right wrist for a long time. Uh, they diagnosed me with carpal tunnel syndrome, severe, and it cracks and it's painful. And I've had. Uh, a lot of pain as a result in the right hand because of it. Uh, a okay. lot of numbness. I've had to take uh, muscle relaxants be, uh, prescribed to me by the doctor because the pain from all this has been so bad that it's it's moved the pain from the wrist all the way up to the, the fingers and all the way up the arm. But it started with the wrist. Okay. Um, before you tell me which word of knowledge you were responding to, um, I felt the Lord telling me to pass you on to Kerry, uh, Pastor Kerry and Pastor Anne-Marie. Kerry's my wife. Anne-Marie is one of the other pastors associated with our church. And I believe that the reason the Lord drew my attention to them was because Anne-Marie suffered a very serious wrist injury a few years ago. And, uh, and as that wrist has been restored, I, I just believe she has specific faith for your problem. And I feel before to put before I, before I put you in that room for them to minister to you, I want to address the spirit of pain. I hear the words spirit of pain. So, Michael, in the name of Jesus, I speak to the spirit of pain that has been causing referred pain to be transmitted through the rest of your hand and up your arm. In the name of Jesus, I command that spirit of pain to go and I command it to leave through the yes. through the end of your fingertips right now in the name of Jesus and I would just just get your hand yeah. and shake it like this just once Michael Michael look at it just like that just like that shake it uh, thank you Lord that that spirit of pain has been taken out of the equation of what you want to do in healing this young man and I thank you Father God that the healing is made complete as Anne-Marie and Kerry pray for him now in Jesus' name. Lucas, can you put him in the room with Anne-Marie and, and Kerry? Praise God. Thanks. God bless you, guys. John. God bless you. And God bless California. God bless you, bless and when you get into church, you sing. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. you, Pastor John. <laughs> God bless you. Love you. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay, what do we got here? Um, all right, um, I'll probably get multiple people responding to this one. Um, okay, there's at least one person in the meeting or a couple in the meeting where you've got strife in your family and um, the strife in the family is being caused specifically by rebellious children. Does somebody want to respond to that? Okay, we've got, oh, there's, can you put Fritz Klein up for a yeah, minute? Yeah, yeah, I just saw that. I'll put him up now. Hi, Fritz, how are you doing? Hello. You got, <laughs> yeah, before, before we go any further, Fritz, uh, uh, is it okay if I talk about what you've been doing the last couple of days? Yes. Okay. I'm so, on my way back, so I'm in a car. Okay. <laughs> there. Okay, um, so Fritz is uh, is an actor in the United States of America who is the person most often called upon when uh, they want somebody to present Abraham Lincoln. And um, Fritz was just at the, uh, I guess, the pre-4th of July celebrations at Mount Rushmore, which was attended by uh, President Trump. And 
Fritz, if, if memory serves me correct, your presentation included uh, Abraham Lincoln's call to the nation to uh, prayer and fasting and repentance. Is that correct? That is correct. And it went throughout the entire nation. What <laughs> went throughout the entire nation? Actually, that's right, because we had an outreach event um, on Saturday morning our time, which was when that event was going on in the U.S., and uh, I, I went searching for it, and I found the uh, PBS, and they were live streaming the event. So I don't know if that was that wouldn't have been the only service that was doing it, but um, I, I I I just had this sense in my spirit that that as you were speaking, God was releasing the desire for repentance, that spirit of repentance across your nation. Um, back at the beginning of March. Um, I talked about the speech that um, Abraham Lincoln made during the American Civil War when uh, he called America to a day of prayer and fasting. It's one of the most profound speeches I've ever heard on, on that topic. And he wasn't a pastor, you know what I mean? He was, he, But that president of the U.S. acknowledging before God the sin of the nation and calling the nation into that place of prayer and fasting and repentance... And uh, we just want to honor you, Fritz, for, for, for what you did at Mount Rushmore. I believe it was a profound thing in the spirit. I believe something was released across your nation as you spoke out those, those words by Abraham Lincoln. So, uh, yeah, how awesome. Thank you. So good. <laughs> so if you're specifically responding to the, a problem with the wrist, is that right? No, with the strife in the family. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I've, I, we, that's right. We moved on from there. The strife in the family to do with rebellious children, yeah? Yes. Okay. Um, so... Uh, I have... Yeah, go on. Yes. There is something very, very severe in our family through one of our children who received, um, I'm guessing... He suddenly turned on me um, in a in a very harsh and unexpected way and accused me of all sorts of things that I don't think are are true, um, and it has created um, a, a, a terrible. Uh, I, I believe it comes from the enemy, and it's created a terrible problem in our family, and. Uh, we have been engaged in spiritual warfare for the past two years over this, um, and it has only gotten worse. Okay. And I, I believe dark spirits are involved. And uh, okay, so the the word of knowledge that, that I've that I've got here says strife and family, rebellious children. And then it says take authority in the spirit. You've been say, you've been doing that, but as you were speaking and you were talking about the spiritual warfare that you were engaged in. I heard the word breakthrough and I feel that the Lord is saying to you to not be discouraged, to not allow the enemy to take any mileage out of, out of this, any more mileage out of this situation that the Lord has heard your prayer. So I want to, I want to release that breakthrough in the name of Jesus. I, I want to thank you, Father God, for uh, what you're doing. I want to thank you, Lord, for, um, for, this family situation being resolved i thank you father god that that the assignment of the distracting spirit that is trying to keep fritz from everything that you have for him that's trying to distract him away from what you have called him to do i would cancel that assignment in the name of jesus i declare over you fritz that you will not be distracted in any of the pursuits that god has called you to that this spirit will not draw you away from your calling in jesus name in jesus name in jesus name thank just you. receive thank that impartation you. I went to that. Thank you, I Lord. I received that. I received that. Thank you, Lord. And, and, I, and, and I just pray, Lord, that as Fritz speaks into the spiritual realm, that he speaks with the same authority that Abraham Lincoln spoke over the nation and that the spiritual realm responds to his words in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' Amen. name. Um, Amen. Who have we got that hasn't ministered to anybody yet? 
Um, we actually have Judy. We can put Judy in a room if needed. Okay. Yeah. Um. Uh, if not, uh, everyone's pretty free besides Kerry. Okay, I'm going to put uh, Fritz. I'm going to I'm going to put you in with actually it's a it's a, somebody from your nation, Judy, the lady who gave the testimony before about being um, being healed of the gastric reflux, and uh, how appropriate that an American resident pray <laughs> with with another American resident over over this particular issue and. Um, it's actually very timely because I, I think Judy can provide her own insight um, into what's going on in her life at the moment, if I can put it that way. So she's going to minister to you now, if that's okay. You. Awesome. God bless you, Fritz. <laughs> All right, let's go back to the gallery view. Uh, there's somebody else in the meeting and uh, you've been subject to ongoing blinding headaches um this is like something that recurs and recurs and recurs blinding headaches does anybody want to respond to that particular one while we're waiting for somebody to respond to that there's somebody else um and you've had suicidal thoughts now you may not feel comfortable um uh you might not feel comfortable um publicly acknowledging that particular prophetic word um if oh okay so sebastian you're responding to that one for the suicidal thoughts awesome we'll, we'll put sebastian up as well can i just get a confirmation if bradley if you put your hand up for the previous one bradley can you hear me yeah if you put up your hand for the previous one we'll put you up after sebastian that's the family strife one is that right uh the one before the suicide uh, okay yeah yeah Sebastian, welcome back. <laughs> Bro, it's uh it's not a good place to be. Uh are you can we have we got him Thanks. unmuted now? You there, Sebastian? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah, beautiful. Um Yeah. It's not good to be in uh ministry training and having been plagued by suicidal thoughts. So we're gonna break those off. I must say uh, I haven't had I haven't had like recently, but I've I've had in the past years. Okay, I well, was really de depressed and uh, isolated and all that sort of be behavior and okay and uh, suicidal thoughts as well. Okay, now I I believe um, this is probably associated with what we prayed through before. But I, I want to deal with that specifically, okay, with the, the suicidal thoughts. So, Lord, even though Sebastian hasn't had those thoughts for a while, I just want to thank you, Father God, that that spirit of suicide, that hopelessness, there's a hopelessness that has been passed down because of the incredible suffering that the Christian church went through in Romania. And I thank you, Lord, that that spirit of suffering is being cut off right now in the name of Jesus, and Sebastian goes free today. I, I see that flicker there. There's a deliverance yeah. taking place right now that that hopelessness is being broken yes. off you. It is being broken off, broken off, Amen. broken off in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Just complete that work now, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Just close your eyes Amen. for a minute, Just Sebastian. Say. Just close your eyes for a minute. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just declare the completion of this right now in Jesus' name, that you're bringing him back to a perfect place of peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Sebastian. Amen. Okay. Thank you. God bless you. All right. Who have we got? Bradley. How you doing, Bradley? You're responding to the uh, strife in the family? Hi. Hi, how you doing? I'm doing pretty well. Hey, uh, when your host acknowledged me and he wanted me to wave my hand, I did in response to him, but all I was doing was readjusting my hand. I really wasn't waving for anything. <laughs> I'm I'm waiting for some kind of a confirmation just to see what you have that I can respond to. 
Sorry about that, Bradley. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That, that's okay. That's okay. okay. So you're not. I, I, need, I need to refrain from moving my hand around too much. <laughs> okay. Um, I've got some. I've got some more words of knowledge still to come. So we'll see if you're responding to any of those. Okay. But I'm listening. All right. God bless you. No worries. I have a next one anyway. Yep. We have uh, Rahul, who was responding to that word, um, the family. The family strife. Yep. So we'll chuck him Where'd up he now. Go? Rahul, he if is. you could use your video. Ah, oh, there he is. Yeah. Hi, Rahul. Hello again. You need to unmute yourself. There we go. Can you Hi. hear me, Rahul? Hello. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. So you're responding to the word of knowledge about yeah, the so strife in the family? Yeah, exactly. We have been striving for a couple of years right now, especially with regard to my brother. Okay. Uh, he's been really stubborn. Even till today, he's been really stubborn, and he's been a burden for every, every one of us in the family. Okay, Lord. I, so, Lord, I, I just want to speak to that rebellious spirit in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, that you are giving Rahul a new strategy to deal with his brother. I thank you, Lord, that you're giving him fresh ideas. I thank you, Father God, that um, even though the family feels like they're at their wits' ends, that you have something new and that it's going to provide breakthrough in Rahul's family situation. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 God bless you, Rahul. Can you uh, go you. back to the gallery view, please? And then can you put Linda Jones up for a minute? I think she's on the other other gallery. There she is, up in the top right corner. Hi, Linda. How you doing? Good, how are you? Um, I'm okay. I just have a quick question to ask you. Um, what happened with your coronavirus test? To tell you the truth, um, it hasn't really come back 100% yet, but I had 10 out of 11 symptoms. Okay. So um, we're going to cancel that off you today. And, um, Lord, the first thing I would declare in the name of Jesus is that Linda's sense of taste comes back because you lost your sense of taste or smell. Was it taste or smell? I lost my both. Both. I had everything. And okay. also my breathing is not 100%. It's really struggling. I have not been eating for the last three days. Okay. So, Lord, we want to break this, Lord, in the name of Jesus, the power of this virus. Lord, there is nothing that can stand before the power of God. And so I thank you, Lord, that there is a deliverance taking place right now, Lord. That that um, afflicting spirit is being broken right now. You feel that, Linda? Oh, I do Lord, feel it. Lord, I thank you, Father God, that this spirit is being broken off because the blood of Jesus has already paid the perfect price. And so I speak a breaking off of every symptom in the name of Jesus and that Linda goes free. Linda goes free. Linda goes free. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Can you put her in with Chrissy and uh, Pastor Lindell, please? God bless you, Linda. And I declare over you that you're going to you. get on that plane. But God wants you to know that in the meantime, he is doing a work in your life. He's doing a work. Let him do the work. Let him do the work. But you're being set free right now in Jesus' name. And so Pastor Lindell and Chrissy are going to minister to you. Um, okay. Um, if you can put me back to gallery view, guys. Um, is anybody responding to the uh, blinding headaches? These are headaches that are so powerful, it's like you, you feel like you can't see. Um, actually, before we go to that, can you pull Nicole up? Nicole, it's like just... Blo yeah, you, Nicole. <laughs> I 
Sarah. Hello. There we go. You know Sarah? I'm unmuted. Hello. Oh, you're on the Okay. <laughs> How you doing? Do you know anybody in our team, Nicole? No, I don't. Okay, where are you where are you joining us from? United States. The United States. Virginia. Okay, Virginia. Um Can I just ask you Nicole, uh have you or any of your family members including your parents and your grandparents been involved in any sort of new age or witchcraft practices? <clears throat> Not that I know of, but I don't know my maternal grandparents. Okay. They passed before I was alive. Okay. I don't, so I don't know if this is something attached to your family line or something that's against you, but when, uh, when my eyes fell upon you in that gallery view, I heard the Lord say witchcraft. So let me ask you a couple more questions just to see if we can perhaps narrow this down a little bit. Um, do you have any situations in your life where you kind of feel like I should have got to this point or this thing should have happened and it just doesn't happen, doesn't happen, doesn't happen, doesn't happen? I think in terms of uh, marriage and marriage. like, you know, building a family, Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, can I ask you a personal question and ask you how old you are? Sure. I'm 38. 38. So you've never been married? No. Okay. Uh, I know I'm getting very personal here, but do you have any children? No. Do you have a desire to have children? Yes. Okay. So the word of knowledge that uh, that I had before about somebody um, um, who is barren, I mean, it, <laughs> barren is usually a medical condition, right? But the fact that you're 38 and that you've never had a baby uh, means that even though you want to have one, you haven't been able to. So uh, I, I would include you in this definition. Now, um, look, I, I, um, can I tell you a story and then ask you a question? It's a bit of a personal question. Um, I'm going to. Uh, I'm just sure. going to tell you tell you a, a little story. Many many years ago, I, um, I'm 60 now. I came back to the Lord when I was 35. In my years away from the Lord, I had a relationship um, with a girl and she fell pregnant and I didn't want to have um, a baby. And so I manipulated her emotionally um, until I had her convinced it was her decision to have an abortion. Now, um, is, um, I know this is a personal question, but has there been, are you aware of any abortion in your family line? Oh, wow. I don't know the answer to that. Okay. So the word of knowledge I had was somebody who is barren, who wants a baby, and then I've got in brackets, ask if they've had an abortion or if there's abortion in the family line. Okay. So um, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do here is I want to break off the witchcraft that has prevented you from meeting the man that God has appointed for you. Would that be okay? And uh, it's... Sure. Uh, I'm not getting a word of knowledge about where particularly this witchcraft has come from. But, um, it, you know, the, the Bible promises us that when we seek him first, seek God first, he will give us the desires of our hearts. And this is obviously the desire of your heart. And so, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I speak over Nicole right now. And I thank you, Father God, that, um, th that Lord... It doesn't matter what the source was. It doesn't matter whether it's a generational thing or whether it's something that's been spoken in a curse associated with the witchcraft. The source of it, the Lord, does not matter. We have authority. I take authority in the name of Jesus that the spirit 
whatever that spirit is that has prevented from Nicole from stepping into everything that you have for her in her family, Lord, is that spirit is being cancelled right now in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, that Nicole is being released into what you have for including the relationship that you have for her in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Can I um I'll, I'll, can I put you in with Anne Marie and Kerry for a few minutes? Would that be okay, Nicole? In a room with Anne, they're going to pray for you a little bit more. Yeah. God bless you. What part of the states are you from? Sure. Virginia. Virginia. Oh, we got a we got a couple of people from Virginia this time. That's awesome. Um, I'm going to put you through to to that room and uh, and God bless you, Nicole. Thank you. Okay. Hey, um, John. I've got I've got another one for you from Linda A. Um, if that's okay, she's um, responding to the blinding headaches, and I think another one there as well. Is it okay if I put her up now? Okay. Yeah. Hi, Linda. How are you doing? Uh, she'll have to unmute. You have to unmute. Hi, John. <laughs> I remember you from last oh, time. Are you? You're from New York. And, um, and and yep. and Pastor Lindell and Chrissy ministered to you last time for quite some time, yeah. So I've got um. Uh, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they told me it was very powerful. Now I've got um this word of knowledge. I've got blinding Ooh. headaches, and then I've got a dash, and then I've got demonic. Okay, so uh, there is a spirit that has been causing your blinding headaches, and we're going to cancel its assignment right now. Um. Uh, I know it's actually on all my children, all three of my children have blinding headaches. Do you have them as well? Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're gonna yeah. break. I've also been having trouble with my vision. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna uh, we're gonna we're gonna break this curse that has come down. I believe it's associated with the Freemasonry stuff that um, I think you were dealing with before. Um, so we're gonna deal with this now, and I'm gonna deal with it to your generation and then from now on you're going to take authority over the following generations until all three of your children are set free amen so lord in the name of jesus i come against this afflicting spirit this is not a spirit of infirmity this is an afflicting spirit an attacking spirit in the name of jesus i cancel your assignment i declare that linda will have no more headaches And I just release the fire of God into every part of her mind, will, and emotions that has been affected by this. I speak restoration. And I thank you, Lord, that the glory of God is coming upon her in such a way that that afflicting spirit is tormented so much by your presence that it leaves now in Jesus' name. Leaves now in Jesus' name. Leaves now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, Linda, how you feeling there? You okay? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you in with, um, with Rose and Renee just for a couple of minutes, just to deal with this aspect of the things that we've been speaking about. Um, I'm going to need them for some ministry later on, so we can't put we can't put you in for a long time. But they're going to deal with the following generations, your children that have been affected by this. Would that be okay? Absolutely. Thank you. God bless. God Thank bless you, you, Linda. Okay. Hey, John. Just before you keep going, can yep. I just say a word to the all the prayer ministers at the moment in the lobby? Uh, if you have already been to a breakout room, and if you are being assigned with someone else, can you please just re-enter that room? It won't do it automatically for you. Um, just so you guys know. Awesome. Okay. Um, I think I've just about. I think we're almost there uh, in terms of. The words of knowledge that we're going to minister to today. Um, okay, there's uh, there, there's somebody else in the meeting. This is um, this is a word of knowledge from one of our team members. You're feeling held down by the stuff going on around you, um, and the Lord is saying to you that you're looking through at your circumstances through the natural, 
and you are forgetting that you have eagle eyes to see from God's perspective. Now, that phrase, eagle eyes to see from God's perspective, um, I would say that this is specifically for somebody in this meeting that um, operates in the prophetic realm regularly. Does anybody want to um, um, respond to this? Um, and uh, and Sylvia, who had this word of knowledge, um, saw like a helium balloon tethered to the ground. So, um, and it's as if God wants to cut that tether so that you can soar. So, uh, somebody held down by the stuff that's going on around them. Somebody want to respond to that one? While we're waiting for that, I'll just go to a couple more of these uh, words of knowledge. There's somebody else, and you have hip flexor muscle pain. This is very specific. Um, and you would know, uh, if it hasn't been diagnosed, um, you would feel that pain in your hip when you walk upstairs or when you lift your knee. You have a pain in your hip. It's, it's actually a hip flexor muscle issue. If somebody wants to respond to that. Um, and there's somebody else that's taking an anticoagulant for blood thickening issues. So if you've had a problem with blood clots and you have to take, for instance, warfarin or one of those types of blood thinning agents, um, God wants to heal you from that condition. Um, there's And there's somebody else and you have a partial facial paralysis. There's something, something um, going on with your face where you have trouble moving your face. Um, uh, and somebody else, deafness in your left ear. So anybody responding to any of those uh, words, just uh, wave to Lucas in the control room. Okay, as no one's responding to those ones, I think what I'm going to do, we've got two galleries of people in the meeting. Is that right? Okay. Um, just give me a wave if you're in the United States of America. Wow, and the next one? All right, I don't have the wherewithal to put you all on one screen, but I'm gonna. Um, I, I, I want to. Um, I want to pray over you guys today, and this is a prophetic ministry meeting, and therefore um, I want to release an impartation um, in the prophetic for you guys, so that you will see um, it, that you will see in the spirit realm that you will hear in the spirit realm. We live it at, at, um, at a time um, across the nations of the earth where we need to hear from God and we need to see what it is that he's taking us into. We need to see what he wants us to do. Um, we really need the spirit of the Lord to move in our hearts and lead us and guide us. And so I believe that there's a prophetic impartation available to you today. And those of our prayer ministry team who are not currently ministering, I want you to just stretch out your hands to the screen. And um, we're going to pray over um, everybody in this meeting today. Jesus, I just want to declare in your almighty name that, there are, that the people in this meeting today are having their ears tuned and fresh lenses applied to their spiritual vision, Lord, that they will see with clarity and they will hear with perfect hearing. I want to thank you, Father God, for those who are not sure where to turn next, that, Lord, that you are leading and guiding them and taking them where you need them to go. I thank you, Father God, for unexpected opportunities that are being released. Can you just switch gallery views for me, Lucas, as I continue to pray? I thank you, Father God, that for everybody in this meeting, there is a fresh impartation being received right now to hear from God, to see what God wants you to see. I thank you, Father God, that this is entirely supernatural. It's got nothing to do with physical hearing or, um, or with physical seeing, but it's to do with the eyes of the heart and the ears to hear God's voice speaking. 
And I thank you that that impartation is being released and received right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. 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 Lord. Just stay in that place of just receiving for a minute. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Open the eyes of our hearts, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for that impartation in Jesus' name. Thank you. Lord, I release dreams and visions in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, dreams and visions, dreams and visions, dreams and visions, dreams and visions. Thank you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey, John. Um, yep. We have Bradley um, that wants to have a, just talk to you for a second. Is it okay if I unmute him? Yeah, sure. Put him on. Hi, Bradley. Hey, How you John. Doing? <laughs> That, that is, wait a minute, let me change my screen here so I can see you better. Okay. I'm not being able to see you too well. Okay. I, all I see is there. Okay, now we got it. Okay. Hey, that's what I was waiting for. I, w- I was wondering if, it, if I could be so bold as to stand in intercession for the United States of America. Mm-hmm. I have a president. I have a commander in chief that is really fighting yeah and I, I don't know how somebody mentioned on a on a face facebook video that i just watched today that uh he um he doesn't sleep right and it, it is really awesome to see this man at work and a lot of the things that are going on and we're hearing from is in this in the state of new york right and there's riots and right. there's all kinds of fighting and commotion going on. Yeah. And I have on purpose decided not to listen to all of the media. Yeah. Because it is, it's just a bunch of garbage anyway. Yeah. And I've decided just to pick a few people, and you are one of them. And I enjoy the media uh-huh. or, you know, how the technology is, is spreading this around. Yeah. And again, I'm just wondering if I could be so bold as to stand in for the United States of America. Yeah. All right. Lord, um, so we're going we're gonna to pray for you, Bradley, and we're, we're going to pray for the United States of America now. And, and Lord, I, d- I just thank you for Bradley. I thank you, Father God, for his heart, for his nation, Lord. I see the heart that you have for your nation, Bradley. And Lord, I, I, I just pray, Father God, that, that as Bradley stands by faith to pray for the President of the United States, the Commander-in-Chief, I thank you, Father God, that, that uh, all the, the, the political stuff that's going on over there would come into submission to what the Lord wants to do in the Spirit. I pray, Father God, that there would be um, an exposing in no uncertain terms of the forces of the enemy at work to kill the nation. That's what that's what the agenda is, to kill the nation. And I, I just want to thank you, Father God, for men like Bradley who want to stand in the gap to see that the enemy's plans don't come to pass. I speak a holy boldness over you, Bradley, and every other intercessor in America. I pray, Father God, a holy boldness. I pray, Father God, a prophetic insight to what is going on. Uh, um, a, a prophetic utterance to come forth that is so in tune with what the Holy Spirit is saying that no force of darkness would stand in the face of it, that, Father God, that you are sweeping the chessboard and all the plans of the enemy are being laid bare. And, Father God, that those chess pieces that the enemy thought he had perfectly in place, they are being swept off the board in the spiritual realm right now. I just declare it, that there is something that new, that something fresh that the Holy Spirit is doing. There is something being birthed in the hearts of those who intercede for that nation that carries great authority in the spiritual realm and that things are going to change, Lord. I thank you for the exposing of demonic agendas 
I thank you, Father God, that the church in the United States of America is rising up into her destiny so that the nation does not lose what God had ordained for it to become. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Radley. Bradley. And uh, can you put me thank down you, back to uh, the, the other view, please, Lucas? I think we're gonna. Uh, I think we're gonna. gonna uh, oh, excuse me. I think we're gonna call it a day today, guys. I want to thank you all for um, for joining uh, the meeting today. Um, because I've got some other commitments, we won't be doing another one of these for at least three or four weeks. But um, I, I just want to thank you for for uh, for coming and joining us, and um, and I can't wait to hear the testimonies of people who were healed and set free and had destinies released and all those those beautiful things, and. Um, uh, because you guys registered by email, we'll be able to contact you by email and let you know when our next prophetic ministry meeting is going to be. And um, thank, thank you again for joining us. Eh? So, Lord, I, I just pray a blessing over everybody in the meeting. I thank you, Father God, for what you've done to encourage faith, to build faith, to uh, receive prophetic vision and hearing, Lord. I bless everybody in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord for the incredible outcomes that are going to emerge from this meeting. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you guys. See you next time.